Um, I do a class on family and marriage, and the main thing I talk about is communication, because in family and marriage, communication is the absolute essential. And the, but the first thing I'm going to talk about is what this conference was called, Men of Faith. And the pictures were of T.L. Osborne, Oral Roberts, um, the one who did the slavery, what was his name? Wilberforce, and um, Benson Ederhoser. And uh, we've had the privilege of knowing Benson Ederhoser, T.L. Osborne, and Oral Roberts. And uh, I thought, well, and then there's a picture of, with a question mark, you. And I thought to myself, I wonder how many would have looked at that picture and thought, well, how could I be a man of faith compared to those people? Look what they did in their lives. And um, the thing is that you only see the one person in the front. And as my husband said last night, we've only got one mouth. And God talks about the body, how we all work together. And so only one can be the mouth. <laughs> but the mouth needs every single other thing around to help produce what the mouth produces, which is words, which is communication. So you are never not needed. You really are not. You are part, wherever you belong, you are part of a body and you are needed, even if you're not the mouth. You're there to support the mouth, you're there to do everything to help the mouth, to express himself in, in what, the way that God intends, but you are as essential as the mouth. So don't ever think to yourself, ooh, I could never be like that man of God. You know, that's not me. Well, it could easily be you because you need, God needs you as much as he needs the one with the mouth. And he never, never makes us do something that we can't do. He never pro says we should do something without providing us with the ability and the strength to do it. And because of that, we have a wonderful, wonderful God who always provides what we need. Most of those men of faith started with very humble beginnings. T.L. Osborne, he was a farmer's boy. He talk, we've ta he's talked to us about how he used to work from dawn till dusk in the fields. From a very early age, he left school, I think, at maybe 14 or 15. And his job was to go behind the oxen. And, put, and, and so that they would be plowing and everything like that. To Oral Roberts, again, very humble beginnings. He talks in his book about picking cotton with his family. Um, it was, they didn't have great education. Oral Roberts, although he made great efforts to be educated in every town that he went to, he always chose somewhere with a university so he could continue his education. So they weren't great, great people, but they, God chooses the things that are not as though they were. T um, Benson Ederhoser was thrown on a rubbish heap because he was so sick he always cried and it drove his father mad. And his father said to his mother, get rid of that child. And so she did what he told her to and she put him on a rubbish dump. And that night, the most horrendous storm, as you can only get in Africa, <laughs> blew up. And she could not bear the thought of her baby in that storm on the rubbish heap. So she left her husband and took him and never went back again. That was his beginning. So you can't ever make an excuse and say, well, I'm 
I'm, I'm not, I'm not for, I can't do it. I haven't got enough qualifications. I haven't done this. I, I've only had a poor upbringing. I've had no father. I've had no mother. I feel sorry for myself. No. Those things can be a tremendous blessing to you. They were for my husband. Somehow, having to fight for life because his father died at the age of eight has made him the man he is today. Don't ever make an excuse and think, because you started with small beginnings, God is not capable of making you a man of faith. Of course he is. He loves you. He loves you. And in Hebrews 11, we read of all kinds of wonderful men of, and women of faith. And, and the Bible says, of whom the world was not worthy. And you read those stories and you see what exploits they did. And you think, could I be part of that? Am I one of those? And it says at the beginning of that chapter, it says, without faith it is impossible to please God. And when I used to read that verse, it used to feel like the sword of Damocles over my head. I used to look at myself and think, well, I've got no faith, so I'm not pleasing God. <laughs> Forgetting. Simple, simple thing. God would never say anything like that unless he had an answer. And faith is a gift. You can't measure yourself by your own faith. It's a gift of God. When you need it, it's there. When you think you can't, you're facing a situation that you can never, you, you don't know the answer for, the answer's there. God provides, always. So never, never let yourself think that you won't please God. And it's, you know, it's like a kind of thing that you, is used to condemn you. No, God never wants it to be used to condemn you. He wants you to understand. He's the author and the finisher of your faith. Amen? So, how could you be a man or a woman of faith? And I was reading some different things about T.L. Osborne. And that when he was, this is what he told us actually personally. When he was 15 year old, and Oral was 19, they would do mini crusades or revival meetings together. He would play the instrument and Oral would preach. Um, but he went on to preach to more people than anyone else in the 20th century. With his wife Daisy at his side, Tommy L. Osborne pioneered third world healing crusades to largely non-Christian populations. His ministry paved the way for many other healing evangelists around the world. That's from the century of the Holy Spirit, Vincent Sinem. Wigglesworth was a plumber. He left his wife preached because he thought he was not educated enough and could not read. She taught him to read. Remarkable miracles happened in his ministry. Lester Sumrall says of Wigglesworth, aged 80 years old at the time, he came over to um, England from America and stayed in England for a while during the war. I wanted what this man had, his bluntness.